I'll Let's call see. the meeting to order. I don't have the minutes in front of me. I don't even have a checklist of the uh, members. So bear with me for a second. Um, I, I'm here, Jack, if you want me to do it. Why don't you do it, Mark? Thank you. Okay, very good. Good evening, everybody. Sorry for the delay. The hour being after 630, I'd like to call the Tuesday, April 25th, School Building Committee meeting to order. Uh, if I could please read this notice on March 29th, 2023, Governor Healy signed into law an act relative to extending certain state emergency accommodations, which among other things extends the expiration of the provisions per pertaining to the open meeting law, March 31st, 2025. Specifically, this extension allows remote and hybrid meeting options for public bodies through March 31st, 2025, without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location and to provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. The act does not make any new changes to the open meeting law other than extending the expiration date of the temporary provisions regarding remote meetings to March 31st, 2025. Uh, our next order of business is approval of the meeting minutes. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. A uh, motion from Ms. Gallivan, do we have a second? Second. second. Uh, second for Mr. Fisher. Let me poll the committee. Mr. Frischer. Yes. Uh, Mr. Barrett. Is Mr. Barrett with us? I'll get back to him. Uh, Ms. Kenny. Yes. Ms. Gallivan. Yes. Ms. Gossitz. Yes. Dr. Goff. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Conroy. Yes. I mean, Jeff abstain. Fisher. Okay, Jeff Fisher. Yes. Jack Fisher. I'm sorry. Did you... Jack Fisher. Yes. Okay. Very good. Uh, Mr. Connor. Yes. Dr. Hahn. Yes. Mr. Senek. Yes. Miss Santiago Taylor. She not with us, and I abstain. Uh, it is a vote. Our next order of business is the project status update. So, Kate, I guess. Mark? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is Jack. I don't see, my, I don't see my, my name even up there. I know I got a new computer, but what it number? Says, am I? says Judy Conroy. Really? It's not coming yeah. up on my little thing. All right. Okay. Well, maybe we got a little problem. All right. That's fine. At least I know I'm in. All right. Okay. Very good. All right, Joel, I'll hand this over to you for the construction update. Yeah, sounds good, Kate. So uh, it's been a very productive month since we last met out there. Um, pretty dramatic once the structural steel starts going up. So since we last spoke, um, I can say that the foundations have wrapped up. So that works complete for the time being. Um, structural steel, we got started a few days ahead of schedule. Uh, they're moving along at a pretty good clip right now. Uh, so the, the section we can see in the photo there, that's building A, and that's uh, the three-story section, uh, one of the three-story sections of the building. So this uh, this photo, Kate, I would say is probably a week, a week ago. Um, yeah, about 10 days old, I think. All right. So yeah, progress uh, is moving right along on the steel. Um, the next big milestone with the steel is uh, by the end of this week, we're expecting that we'll have all of this building A section that you can see here, all three floors done. Uh, so that steel will be done and turned over to the other trades. Um, so that opens up a lot of work. So we'll start to see our plumber, our electrician, and uh, our HVAC contractor, our fire protection contractor, they'll be able to start getting onto that steel and uh, getting hangers in place, getting ready to, to start laying out there um, mechanical systems. Uh, we're also within the next week or so, we'll have the exterior framing contractor, uh, Century Drywall, uh, getting started on site. So, uh, very exciting progress there. Some more shots of the steel here. <clears throat> Good. Um, and from a site development perspective, uh, Quigley, our site contractor, is still uh, picking away at, at underground utilities around the site, retaining walls, and uh, getting getting the, the site outside the building uh, up to speed and running. 
The plumber has also uh, taken advantage of uh, being able to get in there and start doing some underground piping. So there's areas that the steel isn't going up that he's able to get some piping underground and, and bury that before the steel gets gets over him. So Wiggly's assisting uh, doing the excavation and backfill for that that piping operation. So uh, we're making good progress there with the utilities as well. Uh, so as far as uh, structural steel progress, uh, they'll be on to building B next week. That's kind of the next next building as we're heading uh, uh, kind of up the page there in the diagram. Um, and that, like I said, we'll open up building A for the other trades. Um, after we get the, the we're going to give the, all the mechanical trades about a week uh, in there. And we'll start getting ready to start pouring concrete slabs uh, for the floors. So we'll start up at the top kind of work our way down through building A with those slab pours. Um, so all moving right along. Um, generally, uh, we're maybe a day or two ahead of schedule, but right on track. Um, so, so far, so good. And uh, just going to keep up the progress. Any questions on the construction? Yeah, okay. I do. Yeah. Uh, Joel, originally, uh, the steel was behind and they're going to make up time. Uh, and the steel came when you guys said it was going to late. Are they working overtime for this or not? No, Jack. So the steel didn't come late. It came when ahead of when we anticipated it. Uh, the baseline schedule had it coming a little bit earlier. But what yeah. we did was we wrote into the contract for the steel supplier that he had to turn over building A to us basically the same date. So the turnover to the other trades is occurring right when it was anticipated to occur originally. So he had okay. to, he had to kind of escalate that, that first piece to get. Well, I do remember that. And it's also unusual to have your foundation a hundred percent and then the steel start the same day as we know, but yep. just asking. Okay. Anything else? All right. Well, <clears throat> just to touch base on the meetings held since the last building committee meeting and um, con construction administration that's been going on behind the scenes. So we still have our weekly MEP FP coordination meetings with Fontaine, the MEP FP subs, TAP A, the engineers. So we're, there's a, actually a full 3D model that's getting built out, coordinating all of um, the infrastructure for the system. So um, it's in quite a bit of detail. It's, it's really cool to see. Uh, we still have our weekly owners, architect, contractor meetings. Um, we have attended a number of DSCOPE meetings since the last building committee meeting, which included um, appliances, fixed seating, the theatrical rigging, um, spray insulation, wood flooring, and casework. We had our steel kickoff meeting at the end of March, and our third party um, inspection agency attended that along with the engineers. Uh, we had our utility incentive design review meeting um, with the town, and then we continued our weekly um, internal hot list calls just with, with Vertex, um, Tape, and Fontaine, kind of just follow up um, between the OAC meetings on open items at the end of the week. Um, in addition, in terms of construction administration, Tape is on site weekly. Um, their engineers, Weston and Sampson, the geotech, Consultant, EDG, and PSI have been on site as well. So to get into the potential change order log, so this is something we'll be reviewing at every meeting. We went over at the last meeting and just to refresh everybody's memory. Um, so it's broken out in, it's, it's color coded. So the orange is what was previously approved and is incorporated into a change order. The green is what we want to discuss tonight. The yellow is what's being reviewed with TAP A and Vertex. And the white is something that we're tracking but hasn't been formally submitted on yet. So just to, we have a, a line here that just indicates what it was talked about previously. But since the last meeting, we have a few items that have been issued as a proposal request, which means that it's going to pricing with um, Fontaine. 
The first one here is exposed brace frames. This is just a coordination item that came up um, during those coordination meetings and we're going back and forth on clarification that came from an RFI as a result of those meetings. Um, PCO 15, add clips at ACT ceilings in the student uh, toilet rooms. This is something that's tracked as one of the VE items that we'll get into a little bit later. Pull banners, um, these, we'll get into this a little bit later. This is recommended for approval tonight. Um, and it is adding four sets of banners to the exterior of the building, something that was taken out during the 60% VE process. Um, and then a few that we're just tracking and getting pricing on the fence at the buyer retention area at the baseball fields. Um, Fontaine's going to get some pricing for that when they buy out the landscape package. Um, electrical um, Eversource clarification. So this was just um, coordinating the Eversource drawings with our contract documents. We believe this will be no charge. And if anything, it might be a little bit of a credit back to the project. Salvage swing relocation. So in the project, we own salvaging the swing set that's by the basketball court. Um, and this is just looking into potentially relocating it on site. We're waiting to get some pricing on that. Um, electrical revisions, just a few coordination items. Um, and Eversource credit, which was something that was paid by the town, but then it was actually a construction cost, so it's going to get it's getting reimbursed by Fontaine, and then water line removal. So just to get into the two VE items that are hot and we would like to discuss tonight. So just to remind everybody, the operable glass partitions. These are the. Um, operable walls that are at the end of each of the class te classroom uh, technology rooms. So I believe they're at the end of the corridor um, in area A and all three floors. And that is for $210,099 that came in at. And then the second one are these pole banners that go to the exterior of the front of the building. There's four total. So just to give you a summary of the VE priority items um, that have been reviewed in meetings with the school, and um, we have been working with TAPE to put together um, documents for pricing and fonting has been going out um, and getting some numbers. Uh, the two that we're talking about tonight tie back to the steel and have to be coordinated with concrete, um, specifically the tech classroom folding glass partition that has to get um, coordinated with the slab on deck which um, like Joel mentioned is gonna be going in in the next few weeks. So that's why this one is a hot priority to discuss tonight. And then also the pole banners, these, uh, the steel ties back to the structure to support these pole banners. So just to make sure we get coordinated back to the structure, this is another hot one that we wanna discuss. So we Other have any one. questions or comments? I'm sorry, Kate, sorry to interrupt no, you. Go ahead. ahead. I was just gonna say there's a few other ones that are in pricing. Um, I, I put the pricing in light gray here, but you can see the numbers. Um, actually, this offset brick banding, which was something that was removed in the 60% VE, Fontaine reached out to the Mason and they've confirmed they'll do it at no cost. So this is something that can get added back into the project at no cost. Do we have any questions or comments about the VE items? Yeah, Kate, just would you for... So I've, I've kind of lost the, the, the bubble on this one. Would you kind of review the uh, glass petition one again? Yep. So these are, and I don't have a plan view of it, um, but the technology classrooms that are, are at the end of the corridors um, on the first, second, and third floor of area A. Um, I don't know if Chris is on, I think Matt might be, but initially- yeah, so basically, uh, basically they're at the end of classroom way classroom wing A, they're kind of in the middle between the two neighborhood pods on each of the three floors. And that's kind of the, if, if you're coming down the main corridor, you hit the tech classroom at the end of each wing there. And we had taken that out as part of the VE process from, it basically opens up and extends the classroom out into the corridor. So it creates one large opening in the space. And as part of the VE, we, we remove them and the uh, steel support above them. 
and turned it into a hollow metal door and frame with with a much, with a much smaller opening and more, and more glass. So this is taking that out and putting this opening partition in that allows that big opening to happen within the space again. So is the reason for this just to to be, if you open the doors, you've got more space to correct classroom activities? Yeah, it basically makes an extension of the classroom out into the corridor. So you can kind of extend the learning environment out in there in case you're doing large activities and it also gets the kind of the rest of the community involved in seeing into that space and having it open up into that learning corridor. And how many instances of this? There's three. There's one on each floor at each classroom. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Go ahead, Jack. All right. You know, right off the bat, I'm not in favor because why we open up into a corridor, it gets into things that I see like uh, egress, if there's a fire or something. So now you've made your classroom into a corridor. And however that plays out, I'm sure the architects already researched that, but we're, we're putting in glass doors for no other reason other than to look through. To me, been through this enough that you start spending your money on this when we get to the end this is this to me doesn't have anything to do with education it's just one of those it's nice and you got to watch out for those what's nice because those will come and bite you later on but the the fact that to expand i don't unless the architect can tell me different is you can't put your classroom in a hallway is that true i if i I could just respond to this a little bit, not specifically, Jack, to that question, um, but th these doors and these flexible doors were, were part of the original educational plan and the, and the feedback we received from teachers. Both Dr. Goff and I were principals in both middle schools where the corridors and hallways are oftentimes used for, especially in the tech classrooms, for robotics. Um, very common in the science classrooms at the high school for physics when they're limited by smaller and flexible spaces. So I, I understand Jack's point about that. They definitely seem nice to have, but I do just want to point out that they were part of the original educational plan from feedback from teachers, specifically tech teachers, to support those teachers who were doing um, work. The best example I can give off the top of my head is robotics. And that is true that oftentimes when they're working in that, the classroom will extend out into the corridor um, for them to, to run those classes. So th this was this was an item that was in, in our original plan for that reason, um, specifically for these tech classes to be as flexible to meet the educational needs of our students. Yeah, I understand you might have an attack, but I'm looking from paying the whole nut and all this stuff. And it's like we weren't part of the tech plan. This is what I call this would be nice. I'm just advising been down this road for a long time. This is one of those nice things that might come back later. We said, oh, I wish we'd save the money on this. This would be nice, but I'm only one of 15 here. So just voice my concern now on some of the stuff coming down, because I know later on we're going to have other stuff that was overlooked or you need or something. But to me, this is this is a frill. So that's all I have to say. Thanks, Jack. Jeff, you had a hand up? Yeah, do you have a... Um... Do you have the visual of the current design, if this wasn't approved, what it would look like? I don't have that pulled up right now. I can try to pull it up, but the file is pretty large, so I'm worried it's going to freeze my computer, but I can try. Um, but just to remind people that... Um, As a summary, and I know we've discussed this before, um, we were holding, we are holding 2% in owner's contingency. Um, and typically we go into construction with 1%. That padding was, um, you know, brought in early on because of the market conditions. And, um, you know, luckily we didn't have to dip into it. So right now in our owner's um, project contingency, we have 1.8% remaining after the Eversource draw. So we did a little breakout here. If we drop it down to the 1%, um, we would still be holding 925,998, um, um, and then the 0.8% is um, just under 800,000. So are you saying, Kate, that the, if we approve these VEs, it's gonna come out of contingency? 
everything that is tracked on this potential change order log tracks a change, a potential change to Fontaine's contract, and it tracks um, our construction contingency. Um, so it's all summarized at the bottom. Okay. So as we go into the project funding agreement bid amendment with the MSBA, um, we could do you know a budget revision request to drop the owner's con contingency slightly to make up for the money that is being taken out of construction contingency for these VE items. Nancy, you had a hand up. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say we were we were disappointed, very disappointed when we had to remove these um, these glass walls that can then be retracted in the summertime uh, because we visited a lot of of new construction schools and um, you know it's it's one of those things. It's not like the the furniture would be out in the hallway. It's what's used when there's a physics experiment that you need distance or like like Bill Hahn was saying, um, the robot, you might want, want to be able to have it um, go a, on a longer course. And, you know, I understand that it may not be something that, that people have seen in the past, but I think it is part of the future of what we're going to be seeing in schools, because we definitely saw it as we as we toured other schools in other districts. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, Jen, you wanted to say something? Yes, I wanted to um, actually, Nancy said a lot of what I was going to say, but I think that we need to really think about um, making the building modern. You know, when we built the high school in the past, there were certain corners we cut and they're hard to fix later. And in my opinion, this is one of those that I agree with what Nancy said when we tour buildings, flexible learning spaces for collaboration. It's a real key to future learning and the way kids are gonna learn with group projects. It's not like when, you know, I went to school and sat in a classroom, heard someone lecture, everyone's doing group projects. And to me, this is not a nice to have um, as it's been characterized, but it's an essential to have to make our building modern for the future. Thanks, Jen. Anybody else? Yeah, I got one last comment. Yeah, go ahead, Jack. All right, uh, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and argue, but is there anything else coming down the pike that we cut out that we want back in? because now's the time to start going down the list. Cause I don't want to be here two months from now. We get this other lovely thing or this other lovely thing. Whatever is out there that has been cut should be identified now so we can evaluate all of it as opposed to one at a time. Cause when you eat through your contingency, you're going to lose it. So it, it, that's all I'm saying. Just from a, a practical viewpoint, what else, is there anything else out there that you're going to want us later on to add that needs to be brought to the forefront now so we can all make an informed decision as opposed to being one in May, one in July or something. We don't want to get to a point where something you find at the end you really need, you can't do. So that's all I'm saying is if there's, I guess you'd call it a wish list that's been taken out, it must be out there what, what everybody wants. I'm not going to argue with the wish list. Just identify it so we, we all know as a committee what we're, we're going to be faced with down the road. Yeah, Thanks, and we Jack. have that. So I'll, sh I'll flip to that in a second, but I don't know if you can see my screen. I pulled up what is currently owned for the technology rooms. Um, so there's curtain wall on either side and double doors. So this would be the folding glass partition would be in, in lieu of um, this setup here. If you can see my screen. Um, and then... Um, we do have the full list. So um, the school department, a few members of the school department have been meeting on a pretty regular basis going through the VE priority item, the VE list, um, what was taken out previously, what can still come back in. And we've gone through with them and numbered the priorities here on the left. Um, some of them like 3A, 3B, 3C are all related to the bathrooms, which is why they had a breakout. Um, I think the, the biggest ticket item that would be next on the list after the folding glass partition, which was numbered, number put as priority number two, um, would be 
the um, add clips to the ACT ceilings in the student toilet rooms, which was a small ticket item that just came in at $3,400. And then full height tile, all walls and student toilet rooms. Um, we're vetting this right now. It came in at $91,811. Um, if we don't, you know, once we go through this, there is another option to price only restore full height tile at the wet walls, the student toilet rooms. So it's one or the other of these. Um, vinyl wall graphics is something that's a priority, but that's something that could be added in later on and is typically not a very big um, ticket item. And number five is the pole banners. So this is the summary list um, that has been identified as priority. Thanks, Kate. Jack, does that satisfy you? Well, be, if that's it, then fine, but at least put some numbers. You should have some rough numbers that when you took out what we took it out at. And I know it's not going to be perfect coming back, but it's going to give you within five to 10% so that we know what we're up against the rest of the way. That's all. Thanks, Jack. Anybody else have any questions? So I, I think I think we need to come up with a motion. I'm so, Mark, I'm sorry. I, I was yeah, on mute. Yes, I just yeah. wanted to add a little bit of a cautionary note. Um, contingency, you've got to be really careful about that. What's contingency? It's for unanticipated uh, increases in labor, materials, uh, things like that. It's not to add, and I, I, I don't want to demean any any thought on any of these ve things but it's not for the thing it's not for things that are not key to the the uh the uh educational mission and we've already spent we're talking taking a vote right now that when we if we if it's a positive vote we're talking about taking four hundred and fifty thousand dollars out of contingency right now and we have we aren't even 20 percent into the construction phase right now so we've got to be really careful okay it looks like we've got a lot of money but we don't and so we need to be careful about this, very, very careful. And you may have, you, we're gonna definitely get into a, a, a situation not too far down the road where we're doing trades. We can do this, but we can't do this. And when we spend $450,000 out of contingency before we're even 20% through construction, I think that's a cautionary tale and we need to be careful. That's all I'll say, thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Could I ask Kate or anybody, could we could we approve this, maybe sort of have it framed out for the concrete, but then potentially cut it again? Mark, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, spend a few bucks now and you got it embedded. So if you need it, you need it, you, you don't. We've we spent money we shouldn't have, but at least we haven't killed the whole thing. I agree with what you're gonna say. I think, is, is that, and Joel, correct me if I'm wrong, this also has to tie back to the steel above, not just the concrete below. That's correct. So there's a, a, a steel frame that gets uh, bolt hole spacing coordinated with the, the door itself. Um, so we would need a door guy on board to actually finish designing that steel too. Um, it's not totally out of the realm of possibility. We could do the keyway and the slabs for the threshold and... Uh, and get that steel designed and installed. Um, but it would take some legwork on our part to, to figure out how to break that up without a okay. door guy on board. Thanks, Joel. I have yeah. a question, Mark, with, for yeah, Joel. Yeah. yeah. So we don't even have a door. How do we price this without having a door guy? We took the scope of work to furnish these sliding glass doors and sent it out to bid to five different contractors. And uh, we carried the low bidder, who's somebody who's done several of these sliding glass doors on um, other projects for us. So that's what's baked in right now. So you could easily go out to these guys and say, look, this is part one of this. And then we, we're all set. You, you can do part two. So you have the ability right now for him to put in what he needs to, correct? Yeah, so we basically we'd probably have to enter into a small contract to help out, uh, have him help out with the the design phase of the steel, because the steel all gets very custom coordinated to the door. Okay, the other question is, you, you, what I heard is this is a very we need it, we, we need it, we need it right away, but this hasn't even been designed. The steel's already going up. The slabs are going to be already poured a month from now, so I'm not getting the time frame of the urgency. 
So the steel structure, Jack, is something that would need to get uh, welded into the existing steel structure. Uh, so that's something we'd want to do before we got going on interior framing. No, no, I understand that, Joel. But I mean, it sounded like we need to do it, vote this tonight because if we don't, we're going to next month, it will be too late. Yeah, so we'll be interior framing when we get together next month. Um, and that will, this, whether we do this change or not, will affect the interior framing. Oh, I understand that. So, one way or another, this could be broken up. It is as Mark was alluding to that you could just get them to do the low guy to do this for now and then the big portion later which we hope will go through because we've saved enough money everywhere else yeah we would have to go back through the change order find out so it, it involves several different subcontractors the mis miscellaneous metals subcontractor the framing subcontractor, uh, the concrete subcontractor, of course. So we'd have to kind of parse through and, and create a new PCO that shows just these certain portions and leaves the doors out and, and give that to the committee for approval or whoever uh, whoever would have to approve that. Well, if you, you, you know, this is my business too, but right now you have everything but the hanging of the doors. So your concrete guy's all set. Here's his price. The miss signing guy's all set, blah, 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 blah. So it's only the, really the guy that has to make the change will be the door hanging guy. So I, I'm not, I don't, it's not a big issue, but I just don't want to belabor it. But, and I go back to what Mark had said is, yeah, if we get in there and later on we can hang it, great. But let's not go buy it now. I understand that too. Yeah, so what we'd need to do, Jack, is we'd need to buy shop drawings from the door guy so that we could coordinate the steel, get that in, and coordinate the keyway so it was appropriate for if we do proceed with the doors later on. No, I, I understand the whole process of that, but it's everybody's quoted, and the last thing would be to hang the doors, buy the doors and hang them. So uh, it shouldn't be that uh, hard to just get the, the that price because the doors are the big money so mm -hmm. that's all thanks jack nancy you had a hand up yeah i just wanted to ask joel does it are you saying it's going to be more expensive if we break it up though the way jack and mark are are suggesting it could be done or because then it's it's a change order or something like that or is there is there no cost from your point of view no, I don't think it would be a cost change. Change. I think it would be the, um, you know, the cost of everything that's in that change order, including the credits for the the material that got deleted. Um, I think it would just be a, a breaking it into basically two separate change orders: one, all the infrastructure to accommodate the doors, and then a separate one for the doors themselves. That being said. I mean, when would you project that we would have to make a decision on the doors themselves? I mean, in a few months or one month or? I'd want to go back to Nanowall, the manufacturer, and get some uh, confirmed delivery dates because those things can tend to take a little while. Yeah. And then the contract door that we just saw in that plan, do we, is there a hold on that door? Because we don't want to buy those doors and then not use them either. So we just want to make sure we pay attention to that. I put a hold on those frames so they're not manufacturing them until we tell them whether or not to buy them or build them. Great. Thank you. Nancy, do you have a hand back up or is that the yeah. same hand? That's the same hand. Okay. Uh, so I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Does anybody want to, fr uh, Jen, you want a hand up? Yeah, I, I personally think we should go ahead with this. This is item number two on our list. Breaking it down like this, I can't say what is going to come in between here and now where um, when we need to make the ultimate, you know, the final vote. When we talked about the 2% contingency versus 1%, we seem to be in a good place. So I don't understand what the delay is. I personally would like to make a motion to approve the sliding partitions as is suggested, not breaking it into two phases. We have a motion from uh, Ms. Gayositz. Do we have a second? Second. Second for Ms. Gallivan. Uh, let me pull the committee if I could. Mr. Frischa. Yes. Is Mr. Barrett with us? I don't see him. Uh, Ms. Kenny. Yes. 
Ms. Gallivan. Yes. Ms. Gayositz. Yes. Dr. Goff. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Conroy. No, and I'm on this committee for a certain reason because this is my business. So I just want to make that point. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Jeff Fisher. No. Uh, Jack Fisher. Sorry, Jack, we didn't hear you. No. Uh, Mr. Connor. Yes. Dr. Hahn. Yes. Mr. Senek. No. Uh, Ms. Santiago Taylor. Yes. And I vote yes, it is a vote, thank you. Our next item of business is uh, the vendor invoice package. Mark, the poll banner still hasn't been approved. Oh, I'm sorry, that's right too, thanks, thanks Jeff. Uh, so do we, does anybody want to discuss the poll banners? We can make a motion to approve the poll banners. All right, we have a motion from Ms. Gayosits. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Mrs. Gallivan. Let me poll the committee. Mr. Do, Frischa. Discussion real quick. Can we see a visual of it again? Oh, sure, Jeff. Um, so you can see a piece of it there perpendicular to the building. Um, they're at four locations. When I do have the backup for elevations will load. Um, so they are, there's one on the classroom wing A, one on classroom wing B, and I believe two on the gym. So um, they're 14 feet high by two and a half feet wide. And they you know, break up the verticals on the building and um, fall kind of close to the, the brick bump outs that um, are now back in the project. Any questions, Chef? I have a question. Right. Yeah, go ahead, Jack. Of course I do. Huh. How are we going to change? How are we getting up there? How are we changing them? I think we're so adding on, this, on the side of the building that they are, there's lift access. So they are accessible um, if they ever need to have maintenance nope. done to them. Believe me, I understand you're going to use a lift. My point is, and with Donnie there, how are we changing them? That's all. It, you got to understand later on, this is going to be under the maintenance department. Do they got something to go up there uh, to change it or so on and so forth? Do they have to sit in the sidewalk in front of it where the sidewalk's not thick enough to support it? I, I'm just going all these things down the road. Is It's nice now, but Mr. Anderson, hi, Don, you have to change it sometime. Do they have the ability to do it without going out and renting a, a lift for like 800 bucks? Yeah, I'm not sure, Jack. I mean, if, if we're going to vote on this, of course, I'm going to vote no, because I do see it as a uh, maintenance problem, uh, especially because they're so huge, 14-foot banners hanging off the side of a building. But uh, I'm, I'm just going to vote no on it, that's all. <laughs> Anything else, Jack? No, just, just uh, I always look down the road, Mark, is yeah. going to have to maintain it. And it's not like a flagpole. That's pretty Excellent. easy. This is something else. So, anybody else? So we have a motion and a second. Let me pull the committee. Mr. Frischa. Yes. Ms. Kenny. Yes. Ms. Gallivan. Yes. Uh, Ms. Gayositz. Yes. Dr. Goff. Yes. Mr. Anderson. No. Mr. Conroy. No. Jeff Fisher. No. Jack Fisher. No. Mr. Connor. Yes. Dr. Hahn. Yes. Mr. Senek. No. Ms. Santiago Taylor. Yes. And I vote no. Is anybody keeping track? I think I think it passed. Do a totally tally here. Uh, 
Uh, it is a vote. Thank you. Uh, Mark. Yeah, Mark, Jack. Before yeah. you leave, can I request that at the next meeting that we have at least budget prices filled in for all those changes that those VE items so we know where we're going? Sure. Kate, Kate could we do that for next meeting? We'll do our best. Some of these, um, you know, are landscape items that would be at the end of the project. So not even, you know, looked at until demo came down. So, I mean, there is the chance that we could see where we are budget wise for like the granite ballers at the main entrance and a stair down the hill to the ball fields and evaluate those later. I think that some of these um, casework items um, we haven't bought the case casework sub out. So we're getting some unit pricing on that. Um, we'll do our best to get it filled in. Okay, hey, my understanding. Sorry, Jack, at least the dollar values that when we remove them that were the placeholders before, some, something to that effect. I think that's what Jack is asking. Yeah, they, exactly, Mark. You had placeholders for them. I'm not asking down the last cent. I'm just asking, is it 10,000, is 11,000, and so on. And the, la the last question I have, only because the stairs down to the ball fields, aren't we going to have to require a uh, handicap ramp there too? Um, so the sidewalk, I believe, follows uh, the ramp is already installed and the sidewalk kind of follows the the um, the road perpendicular to the front of the building. So there's no additional ramp that has to be installed. OK, so that's right. but as down. as Mark said, I'm just looking for the value of the VE, what we pulled out. It's going to get us close. It's going to give us within, like I said, five to 10 percent. That's all I'm looking for. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Um, our next item of business is the uh, vendor invoice package. Okay. Yep. So um, as discussed a little bit earlier, the, the town paid two of these utility bills that um, Fontaine is reimbursing us for, um, and they've been switched over to Fontaine's name, so this shouldn't happen again. Um, our typical uh, Vertex invoices, which include um, the testing services from PSI and um, the we had one other invoice from Project Dog from the bidding process that we hadn't processed. And then TAPE's um, invoices, including Geotech and Fontaine's REC. So just the standard invoices, Fontaine's REC, which is 4,117,501. And it's higher because we're getting into steel. And so the total is four million three hundred forty thousand nine hundred and sixty one dollars and forty cents for the March two thousand twenty three invoice package. Thanks, Kate. Do we have any questions? No. Make a motion to approve four million three hundred forty thousand nine sixty one forty. All right. We have a motion from Jeff Fisher. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All right. Second from Ms. Gallivan. Let me pull the committee. Mr. Frischer. Yes. Ms. Kenny. Yes. Ms. Gallivan. Yes. Ms. Geositz. Yes. Dr. Goff. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Conroy. Yes. Jeff Fisher. Yes. Jack Fisher. Jack. All right, we lost Jack. Uh, Mr. Connor. Yes. Dr. Hahn. Yes. Mr. Senek. Yes. Ms. Santiago Taylor. Yes. And I vote yes. Our next item of business is a uh, discussion and communication to and from the MSBA. Okay, Mark, I have one question. This is yeah, more Jack. for, I, I'm sorry, but it's for Fontaine or even Vertex. Um, we have gas serving the building, correct? No, there's no gas at the new building. There's no gas at all. So it's all oil? It's all it's electric. electric. Oh, it's all electric. Okay. All right. The question I have is, I've been down this road before, is is there any issues when they try to take out the permit to put it in? Because I always had issues with my own dealings with, they didn't want to put it in the contractor's name. They want to put it in the owner's name. Is that have been an issue yet? I'm just pointing this out from past experience. Permit from uh, the wiring inspector? Like the no, no, permit. not from the wiring inspector, just from Eversource. 
because a lot of times I've been down the road like gas is we won't we won't give it to the we only give it to the end user and the same thing here is is there many issues yet on that that's all no I think uh we're, we're we've been moving along pretty well with Eversource uh from the electric standpoint and we don't have the gas obviously so I think oh. uh yeah, you know, duck banks going in and, and we're moving forward. So we should be good to but, go there. But my point is when they go to turn it on, they typically want the owner, not necessarily the contractor. I'm just pointing out down the road. That's why I'm here. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. Kate, continuing. So MSBA communications to and from, just to update the committee, um, the MSBA reached out for the PFA bid amendment request form. Um, and that was submitted to the MSBA MSBA on March 17th. Um, and this basically just is a bunch of documents that break down the actual bids on um, the PFA. Bit. The P original PFA had um, line items broken out by division, but now that we have the GMP executed and the contractor on board, um, we update the PFA bid amendment to tie directly to the numbers we have from Fontaine. Um, so they have all the information they need and they are drafting up um, the PFA bid amendment um, that then they will send over to the district and we'll review. Um, and our monthly MSBA meeting uh, will start probably the late summer. Thanks, Kate. Any questions? Our next item is uh, a reminder that our next meeting will be May 16th. Any questions about that? All right, hearing none, I would accept. Oh, Mark, I'm sorry. Mark. Yeah, Jack. Yes, Jack. This is going to be in person, right? It's a good question. It's uh, we have a hybrid option at this point, which is what we were aiming for. Uh, <laughs> Pat, are we going to be able to do this hybrid next time? If that's what the committee is looking for, we can All right. accommodate whatever. So we've got our finance committee room that seats the 15 member finance committee. So, so Pat, what are the rules about? A, do we have to have a physical quorum? No, no, home. it's, it's, you can have all remote, you can have half hybrid. Um, it's, we're able to pretty much accommodate a pretty seamless right. hybrid meeting. So if that's the direction of the committee. We can, we can accommodate whatever the committee. Can we do for. it on site? Are you asking me? I'm asking whoever can answer the question. So I think if it's yeah. in person, I think, I think there needs to be some direction from the committee about what you want as far as the future of the meetings so i don't believe that there's i don't believe that there's a capability for a hybrid meeting but i guess i would ask principal connor if if that's something that bird middle school can can accommodate a bird but Patrick, yes we there... could i mean we could do it in the media center and we have a projection screen there that we could anybody who wanted to be hybrid on video could be projected up there and we could have uh computer that could look at everybody who's there in person. So if you wanted to do it there, you could. Patrick, is there anything is there anything that has been said? I thought May 1st it's over. Is there a law that we don't know about that says you can do it hybrid? Everything's uh, been extended, yeah. Jack. Yep. Yeah, it was extended, I believe, two years to 2025. Um, really? I gee, I thought it was May 1st, but that's all right. No, it got extended again a couple I think within the past week, week and a half, Jack. Oh, okay. So uh, Pat, we can't do a hybrid meeting in the in the FinCon room. Where we like, can, but I think one of the members made a suggestion about doing it on site. So again, we I think can. we just need uh, some direction. So, um, Jeff, Jeff, that, Jeff, that was me. To... That was me, Mark. I, you know, I'm just thinking back when we were building the police station. We were right next door at the public library watching yeah. the construction, being able to see hands on the progress. So, you know, I think Does that's any, getting that and Jack's getting that. Yeah. Does anybody have any objection to uh, attempting, I guess, through Pat, you, and I'd like to follow this off on you, Pat, and, and Mr. Connor, to attempting to uh, arrange a hybrid meeting at Bird next time? And again, you don't need to physically be there. It would just be for those of us that want to be. So why don't we try to do that, Pat, if we and and Mr. Connor, if we could try to arrange that. Yeah, how about how about we try to arrange it? I just got a text message from the Wapo Media Corps 
um, executive director Tamara Green, who is listening, says you can't do a hybrid meeting on, at the location. So why don't we why don't we see what we could try to accommodate? I think if if I'm hearing that from the committee that there's a preference for a hybrid for a hybrid meeting, we can certainly accommodate that. It's just a matter of the location. So um, I just want to make sure I understand that that's that's what the committee is looking for. That that sounds good, Pat. Any objections to that? All right, very good. Uh, so our, our final order of business is a motion to adjourn. Do we have a motion to adjourn? No moves. I have a motion for Ms. Geosis. Do we have a Mark, second? Sorry, sorry not to belabor the point. I just yep. want to also get an understanding of what the committee's expectations are for the contractors involved in this. So I know with like Fontaine, Western Mass Company, you know, you've got Vertex, Tape, it just, you know. It, I, I I should think they would be able to zoom in. Okay. Still. All right. Just wanted yeah. to make sure that that was, yeah. you know, permissible yeah. from the committee's perspective. So. No. Makes makes sense to me. I just think you know some of us want some FaceTime. That's all. So with each other. So. Uh, if that's my Mark, reason. Yeah, Jack. Mark, yeah, Jack. What you're gonna do? I'm gonna. I'm been down this road long enough. Is you're gonna get to the point where. You're going to want to be there when stuff's explained to see what's going on. Nobody cares about a steel deck. All right. No one cares about a bunch of steel beams, but we're going to get to a point at some point that you're going to want to have it there. We started doing them at the high school. So you could actually go out and see what they're talking about. So my point is somewhere down the road, I don't know what this 2025 is, but is at some point we're going to want to meet there so that everybody can grasp what's going on. So I'm just, forecast in the future that's all not next month or the month after but at some point we're going to want to be there to, to understand what's going on and what they want to do that's all thanks do we have a motion to adjourn for Ms. Geosis? do we have a second second all right i have a second uh for mr Hahn. thank you let me pull the committee uh mr frisha yes Ms. kenny yes Ms. gallivan yes. Ms. geosis yes. Dr. Goff. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Conroy. Yeah. Jeff Fisher. Yep. Jack Fisher. He dropped. All right, Mr. Connor. Yes. Dr. Hahn. Yes. Mr. Senek. Yes. Ms. Santiago Taylor. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.